eight after eight after seven. Let's go ahead and uh, start this. Can you flash your uh, first slide up there, Bruce? And uh, I'll kick it off and then uh, hand it off to you. There we are. So this is a uh, ride captain training and I'd like to welcome you all to uh, this session. Uh, what we've put together is um, uh, some best practices and lessons learned for how to be a, a ride captain. And the important part of the, the reason why we're doing this is that, you know, we've got a very uh, robust and uh, fairly good uh, ride program for the club. But uh, we can't rely on just a handful of people being the ride leads and being the ones that are always uh, thinking of rides and then planning and executing. We need to have uh, more people involved so that we have a nice variety of rides and experiences for the club members to uh, uh, participate in. So uh, part of this uh, ride captain's uh, training is also to try to... Uh, spread out the ride captain uh, responsibilities, but also associate uh, ride captains with uh, each of the dealerships so that uh, we can uh, spread spread our uh, riding program uh, throughout the uh, Washington area, Washington capital area region, and also up into uh, possibly Kissel Motorsports up in uh, Pennsylvania and, you know, farther out uh, east of, uh, DC, you know, more into the uh, e Eastern and Central uh, and Southern Maryland area. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to uh, Bruce Diamond, my riding companion and uh, fellow ride captain to uh, go through the, the training. Awesome. Hey, welcome to ride training, ride captain training for the BMW Motor Ad Club of Washington, D.C., like Jose said, uh, one of the highlights and strengths of the club is the variety and richness of the rides program. But as he said, the rides program cannot rely on a handful of members that consistently plan and deliver rides. Our club needs more members to step up and come up with ride ideas as well as plan and execute rides. This training module has been developed to provide you with the information and best practices to plan and execute rides. Okay. Okay, so, and, 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 hold on. I hit the resume there. Okay, cool. There we go. Okay. So, these are the uh, overview of what we're going to include in this training. It's going to be uh, what's what define what a road captain, ride captain is. Uh, talk a little bit about our rides program, but also uh, we're going to tell you how to plan, how to execute a ride, and also some best practices and lessons we've learned by making our mistakes that you do not have to repeat. And I do have trouble with this thing. Okay. Okay. Cool. So ride captain is um, a, a skilled leader, um, a skilled rider. We want somebody who's an experienced rider, has a bit of tenure in the club, club member in good standing. Uh, it's, it's really not a, um, it's really not something that we want just a newcomer to the club to do. Um, and um, I'm having trouble with that. Okay, cool. Um, I'm sorry, I'm having some issues. My computer's complaining about and every time I click on something, it complains. Uh, but also, the you know, right captain should be organized, should be detail oriented and open minded. Uh, but basically, you got to just make things happen, okay? And that includes uh, all sorts of skills, which is you know, getting other people to volunteer to help you out, uh, promoting the rides, um, being available for questions and things like that. Uh, but here's the thing: a ride captain isn't just the guy who's leading this ride. The ride captain is also somebody who assists other ride captains you know we're calling them a small group lead and the point of the small group lead is um you know if the group gets too big he can be like a secondary road captain and okay Oops. so and that there there we go 
Okay, so typically the writing season is April to November, um, and those are the months that we have the monthly breakfast meets in Maryland, Virginia. But of course, we do group rides uh, any month, and you know we do New Year's Day ride, we do President's Day ride, etc. So uh, even though the typical season is April, November, we can do it any time of the year. Um, and although we try to have at least one ride per month, we want to stress that you can have more than one ride per month. Um, and this is especially good for members. They might have a weekly commitment on a Saturday or a weekly commitment on a, commitment on a Sunday. Okay. So it's nice to have a little mix of day rides that are on Saturday and day rides that are on Sundays. Uh, and this, of course, is be in addition to weekend and longer trips. Um, uh, there's no limit to the number of riders that we can have uh, on any ride, but realistically, the number of riders in attendance is limited to the ability of the ride captains uh, or availability of the ride captains. You know, most ride captains prefer 10 or fewer riders in a group uh, just for safety and group management. Um, I know that some of the other clubs like to do giant parades, but that's not what we do. Uh, we just don't feel those are safe. Uh, we do not limit our rides just to BMWs. We welcome all brands uh, because, hey, you know, they might be riding a Honda now, but, you know, their next ride could be a Beamer. Um, we encourage ad hoc rides, especially when there's a beautiful weather forecast appears. I mean, so, you know, sure we have a full schedule, but there's nothing this day and boom, the forecast is gorgeous, you know, throw up something real quick. Even if it's only a couple of days notice, there'll be a few people looking for something to do when the weatherman says it's going to be beautiful out. Um, and, uh, it's not just the ride captains, uh, planning these rides. Any club member can propose a ride, but uh, they might say, yeah, I'd like to do this ride. I'd like to go on this ride, but I, I don't want to lead it. You know, I'm not comfortable leading a ride or, or I'm just not sure. And maybe I'm not, don't feel experienced enough or organized enough to do that. So there's the thing that a ride uh, captain can do. So the club member come in and said, this is the ride I want to go on. The ride captain can take that and put it into the club and he can lead the ride and make sure all the safety stuff is done. Okay. Yeah, I, I have to admit the reason I'm here for the training is I don't really want to drive to Clifton in the morning to have breakfast. That's like an hour and 20 minute ride for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, but I, you know, if I'm a ride captain, we can go to a Fredericksburg place. Sure, sure. Um, absolutely. And, my, and also the flip side of that is that you're not the only one who's out in the boonies, you know, even if most of us are concentrated, you know, in Clifton or concentrated in Gaithers, concentrated in Gaithersburg, you know, there's plenty of people in your boots who don't want to go all the way into the city, what they want to escape from just to go start a ride. Okay. Um, okay. So just a little few words about ride planning. If, if you've not been uh, planning your own rides for a while, uh, one of the things that helps is to start with a objective or a theme, you know, um, the President's Day run, you know, the homes of the presidents. That was a great theme and a very popular one that Jose has had. Uh, another theme might be uh, we've had an we had an iron butt ride. They get a saddle sore 1000. There was a there's an example of another kind of theme. Um, so you pick your theme. You can start with your destination. And then pick a good starting point that does not force the group to traffic congestion. For example, I'm in Arlington. But if I wanted to go to, say, some Harvard de Grasse, because there's something up there I want to see, I don't want to start my ride in Clifton or even Arlington. I would pick something on the Maryland side of the Beltway, you know, to start the, it off. Because uh, don't don't start it just where you just where you live or near where you live. Start it at a good, convenient place that it's going to be a good ride from the get go. You don't have to like cross a bridge and go on the beltway. Um, uh, a good starting point is really important because you need to, um, a gas stations are good or at least near a gas station. I mean, ideally it would have gasoline, bathrooms, donuts, and coffee. You know, you pick a place like that, you're gold. Um, some of the other things to uh, consider when you're planning a ride, um, how many miles are you going to travel? Okay. How much time is it going to, take to cover this distance are you planning uh, a day trip uh is it a half day trip or a full day trip are you going to like 
you know, breakfast to lunch or lunch to dinner? Or are you going to do like, you know, before breakfast and come back after dark? Um, or are you doing a multi-day one, you know? Um, and if it's a multi-day one, is it going to be camping? Is it going to be hotels? Things like that. Um, and going back to the objective of the trip, you know, it's things like, um, you know, if you want an iron butt ride or an interested site, uh, it can also be just, you know, challenging winding roads, but you want to uh, keep the rider's skills and experience in mind when you're planning. You, you might be really fond of deep sand washes, but I don't think too many other people are. Okay. You might enjoy thousand mile days, but uh, that might be a little too much. So, you know, develop a, a, a route that not only that you're going to like, but also that a fair amount of broad appeal to other people in the club. Keep in mind also for a fun factor, you know, and the fun factor is not just for uh, enjoyable roads with good surfaces, uh, but, you know, maybe it can be uh, challenging hairpins, or maybe you do want to challenge like a water crossing, a little bit of adventure in there, or maybe you just want to have a nice sedate ride, but stop at a go-kart track, things like that. I mean, these are all things that have, we've had on rides in the past, you know, and um, it's it's great to mix it up because that way we're not always doing the same old thing. Uh, so um, you might have your preferred route planning app, you know, Base Camp, wherever Google Maps, Ways, etc. Um, it's really great to do that. Plan it on the computer. Estimate distances. Figure out where your gas stops and meal breaks are going to be, etc. Um, but don't also, but don't forget to also use like paper and online resources to find the great motorcycling road. Um, you know, Butler Maps are really good, and they, I mean, those are curated routes that that they that they uh, put on those things. So it's not just like, well, this is the route that's the best because it's between my house and my favorite bar type of thing. No, this is people who go out; they go with the whole area, and they're evaluating. If they say this is a number one G one level road you can bet that it's going to be a G1 level road for the whole area on the map. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, what was that road that's going to be on the um, beginning of this ride out of Winchester? That really nice one that came off of a Butler map. We were, uh, I, I was looking at your, your GPS file and, and noticed this little bit of yellow off to the side. So it's like, Hey, I'm going to turn down that bit of yellow and it's a really beautiful road. Okay. Um, and and if you want to do a little adventure riding, uh, there's always the backcountry discovery route. You know, um, after you get it planned, it's a good idea to get your peers to review the route. You might think you did something with broad appeal, but uh, you'll find out just how close you actually are after you have a few friends uh, look it over. All righty. All righty. And. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, so now you got the right plan. Uh, you need to promote it a little bit. Uh, so get it published on the club's events website and on the Meetup pro portal. Uh, there, We actually have another PowerPoint explaining the details of how to do that. Effectively, it takes you through all the steps. Uh, if you're accustomed to WordPress, it's easy. If you're not familiar with WordPress type stuff, uh, it might be just a little hard. It's not too hard, and we got uh, good instructions for that. Was somebody trying to say something? Cool. I think uh, Mike's not muted, and I think maybe – there we go. Okay. That might have been it. Okay, cool. It sounded like little burps there. I was like, okay, that's an interesting form of <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, okay. So when you're when you put it on the club site, you obviously you got to describe the event so people know what to expect and also get excited to attend. So make sure you put, you, you explain where you're going and and what's at your destination. Um, and remember, I said sometimes it can be the journey or an attraction or cool destination at the end. So put that in the description too. So this the point of this is this awesome journey. The point of this is is a, I don't know the go kart track or the point of this is a president's mansion. Uh, so make sure that's all in there. And also, what kind of route did you pick? Did you get a sporting challenge through the winding mountains? Or is this is a scenic cruise on gently bending roads. I mean, did you put in gravel and water crossings? 
make it clear what skills are going to be tested. Because if there's a water crossing and I'm on the ride, I will be very disappointed, let's say. Um, now, a lot of uh, club members can only get away for a few hours, but others have like retired and they got long weekends available. So definitely make a mix of them. Don't We don't want the calendar to be just day rides or just weekend rides. We want a nice mix of the two. And, uh, and I'm retiring next year in, in July. So hopefully I'm going to be able to do some more writing then um, if my wife doesn't have a honeydew list a mile long. Um, if you are planning a uh, multi-day trip, uh, make a decision at the beginning if it's going to be either camping or hotels. Uh, for things like rallies, there's often op options for both, okay? Um so make sure the description is going to have that information because if you put something up there, it's like this is going to, we're going to leave Friday afternoon and then we're going to return on Sunday evening and people are like, well, where are you staying? You know, is it a campground? Is it a hotel? It is a nice hotel. There, there's a difference between um, my wife's opinion and my opinion over what a nice hotel is. I like cheap. She likes clean. Um, okay. Um, each rider needs to know the distance so that they can calculate how many fuel stops they'll need. Um, you, the times you're going to put in there, are there going to be the times for linking up at the starting point? And uh, make sure that includes times for a rider's brief. But you definitely want to clearly publish when you plan to have kickstands up. That's what KSU means. Or else people believe they can just be five or ten minutes late. Because, I mean, we all do that. I mean, I, okay, I tell my wife, you know, we, uh, we need to be there at seven o'clock and she's like it's rude to arrive on time you need to be five ten minutes late okay fine put in there seven o'clock meet, uh, meeting and uh 7 15 kickstands up and that way we know exactly what's expected we can be there at 705 but still roll out on time um and that that i think is real important and then we stick to it pretty much um now, if this ride has just one ride captain, you definitely want to limit the number of riders to what you are comfortable leading. That might be six. That might be 10. Now, if you have another ride captain available, you know, remember I talked about small group leads? You can double the number. And uh, address any uh, inf miscellaneous info on the, on the route or the destination, you know, uh, Okay, maybe you have a multi-day trip and the campsite requires bear-proof food storage. Okay, that's something that people might want to know in advance. Uh, if there's going to be entrance fees, sure, we're going to go on the Skyline Drive. Maybe not everybody new to the area knows that that's, that's a fee. That's a toll road. Um, definitely put in if you're going to include tolls and things like that. Um, after you get this all on the uh, the club's ca events calendar, um, you want to also put it on Meetup, and uh, you want to put the Meetup URL in the event sites in the website's event listing. Uh, we use we use Meetups for RSVPing and commenting on the plan, and the events calendar on the, on the website is that's to announce it to the world and and get non-members interested too. And, and show that somebody who's thinking, who, who are these guys? Let me look at their calendar. Wow, it's a full calendar. That's what we really want to see. But uh, the meetup is for RSVPing, and we are considering going private on the meetup. And if that happens, then uh, the only way non-members can see descriptions of the rides will be in the events calendar. Okay. And next is uh, the execution. So there's actually sort of like four stages, three, three or four stages of this. Uh, when you're time to execute the ride, before the day of the ride, like leading up, you want to keep an eye on how many people RSVP'd on meetup, okay? If it's like, you know, three or four, you, you got no problems or anything, but it's suddenly you were expecting maybe eight people would be interested and you got 24, all right? Um, now you're going to need another ride captain to be a small group lead. Uh, often on the meetup site, we will start out with the number like, you know, I'm comfortable with a group of 10. So I'll put on the meetup site, the limited to 10 attendees. Okay. And then I go in there and I notice, Hey, this thing's got, a, I got five people on the waiting list. Now I'm going to call up somebody else and says, Hey man, uh, are you going to go on the ride? Uh, can you be the small group lead? If they say yes, now I can double it to 20 and everybody in the wait list is in. This is a way that we don't get a gigantic crowd 
that it's going to make the ride captains uncomfortable and and some people unsafe. Um, another uh, advantage of this is that when you if you can break riders into small groups with each group being assigned to a small group lead, you can change it. Like you know, some riders like to go slow and look at the scenery, and others are at risk of losing the license. Uh, don't group them together. Um, this is where a small group lead, a second or even a third one can be really, really helpful. Okay. Um, okay. Now, That's great. Great. Yeah. If you have a small group leads, definitely you want to get the root GPX files out to them and offer it. Uh, it's a good idea really to offer it to anybody on the ride who's interested in having that. Um, it, it's best if you're not the only one who knows where you're going, uh, especially if, if something happens and the group winds up uh, getting split up unfortunately it can happen has happened okay Come on. yeah cool okay all right so now we got the um the, the day of the ride okay uh you definitely got some things to do before you can lift your kickstand Get everybody to sign the liability form when they get there. Uh, uh, try to just get that done by people as soon as they get there, because that way you, you can talk to them one on one. Because some people are going to balk at this. Why the hell do I have to do this? Blah 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 blah. blah. Okay, you know what works when people are balk at signing it? Just say our insurance company makes us do this, and you know people sue everybody at the drop of a hat. You know, uh, uh, you get a flat tire, you might. And then crash because of the flat tires. Nobody's fault, but you know, your 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 lawyer might want you to sue the club or something like that. Just tell them that the club needs insurance, and you got to do this to have insurance. I, when I put it that way to people, they generally just grumble or make a joke, and then they sign the thing. Okay. And as people are coming in, as you're getting close to time that you need to do a writer's brief, you can double check on the meetup to see who's missing or late. I mean, if you if they've got somebody on the meetup that you knew was coming and they're not there yet, yeah, it's your option of whether or not you want to call them or do anything like that. Um, hey Bruce, where do you get yeah. the um where do you get the waiver forms? Great question. Uh we have some uh we get them from the insurance company and we just sort of have some copies of them flown around they come in like one of those pads where you like tear off a sheet after you fill it up um jose's got a couple i mean i i have one here somewhere in my apartment uh and other people have them too uh basically we just want to give one a pad one of these pads to every ride captain so that they can have it and uh and just have it with them uh, if you can keep it in your saddle bag that's great you know okay. And you, you don't have to keep the whole pad in there. You can tear off a couple of blank sheets and keep that around there. But for some strange reason, it says right on it, photocopies are not acceptable. I have no, no. idea. I have well, no I, can, I can scan it to a PDF file. That wouldn't be a photocopy. Well, that's true. And we have the scan. We have a scan and I can give that to anybody. And and we actually have done that because there was one time in the past when they ran out of them. And and we had to, I said, well, I'll just, you know, use a photocopy. And they said, well, that's fine, even though you're not supposed to, which, yeah, it all, it all makes perfect sense, you know? Okay. <laughs> um, there we go. So, so anyway, uh, just, blah, 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 blah. oh, one of the things is if you don't already have somebody picked, ask for somebody to be, the tail gunner or the last rider in the group. All right. This person should know the route or at least have the destination in their GPS. Okay. And he should also have the ride captain's phone number because if the group gets separated or somebody breaks down or God forbid, you know, crashes, he's the one who's going to see it and stop. And um, if, 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 if the ride captain is way in the distance, he might wind up calling the ride captain and says, Hey, Turn around, we got a problem. Um, so yeah, pick a tail gunner. Should be a, a somebody who's experienced with club rides, and uh, and somebody that's very reliable. Uh, okay, so now, uh, oh great, now we're to the rider's brief. Okay, so okay, the rider's brief has a few purposes here. Yeah, sure, it it breaks the ice and it gets the riders to socialize. Uh, we even 
almost had a job offer from one of these writers briefs but anyway uh <laughs> it says it has a safety purpose in the discussion you, you can get a good estimate of the writer's skill levels and who might be a beginner writer and who might be somebody who thinks he's a really great writer okay um I've mentioned splitting up groups by how fast they like to go. If you have a nervous beginner, you know, put them in second place behind the leader because the beginner has to set the group's pace. As frustrating as that can be. But the thing is, the leader has to see him in his mirror so that the leader can adjust the speed of the group. You do not want the beginner at the back where he's going to feel pressure to go faster than his skill level to keep the group in sight. I mean, just think of that. We've all been in the back of the group. And what does it do? It's like, it's like an accordion, you know, you're going real slow and then this group spreads out and then you're racing, like, you know, 20 over the limit to try to catch up only to slam on your brakes. And then you slow again, the, the guy in the front, he's got his cruise control set. Okay. Whereas the guy in the back is doing 20 below the limit, 20 over the limit, and everything in between. Uh, that's natural. Some of that is natural. Uh, but we don't want a beginner to be stuck in that position because you're asking them to ride over their head. Okay. Um, so now you're going to give a, a brief route overview in the writer's brief. Uh, you're going to mention how much distance you have planned between bio breaks and gas stops. Um, find out here if anybody's limited by a small capacity gas tank, okay? If you have any dirt or slippery things like a wooden bridge deck or a water crossing, this is the time to mention it, okay? Because there's a few people that might say, oh, I can't handle that. Um, but better find out now than when you're at the obstacle. Um, this is also where you can explain staggered formations and go over uh, hand signals, you know, some basic hand signals. Um, make sure every un everybody understand when kickstand up time is, okay? So that is like you have the writer's brief and then somebody goes off to get a latte and a donut. You know, what, I wanted to leave in two minutes, and I, yeah, whatever. Um, uh, tell them to ensure they have enough fuel to make the first gas stop, okay? And remind them to go to the bathroom just as if they were little kids, okay? Tank's full, bladder's empty. We all know that, but, you know, maybe some people forget or they're just not used to groups, okay? Um, also, you're going to want to explain the writer's responsibility, which I go over on the next two slides. Okay, so these are their riders' responsibilities. Okay, um, nobody should tailgate. Okay, if you're riding staggered formation, maintain a one second time behind the rider in front and to your side. If you're riding single file, leave two seconds, just like you would for a car. Okay, do not pull alongside another rider <clears throat> unless we're all coming to a stoplight, you know, or coming to a stop sign then it's fine. Now, I know that Virginia law has been changed, and I know that it's now legal in Virginia to ride side by side. I'm not comfortable doing that with people I don't know extremely well, and I don't want to do it even with people I do know extremely well. Um, and uh, one of the things like, okay, when do you use staggered? When do you not use staggered? On, okay, you definitely use staggered formation on a multi-lane road where you got two or more lanes traveling in the same direction. OK, this makes the whole group shorter to reduce the chance of getting split at a traffic light. And it's denser to discourage cars from merging into the middle of the group. OK, but, you know, once you turn off the main street onto a narrow two lane road where you're not going to have, you know, another lane of cars, you know, go to single file. This lets the group spread out and allows each rider to use the full lane for turns. You want the full lane for an outside, inside, outside line or a late apex line. Uh, anybody who rides with me knows that I am I am changing my lane position constantly. It's a habit I'm in first off so that other cars notice me more. And I also like um, 
I like to I have different lines in the corner. So if you're trying to do staggered formation behind me in the twisties, um, I, I might bump your tire. Okay. Uh, so let's let's just keep that in mind. Any debate on this, guys? Any debate on what I said? Because often people I know there are people who have issues with like three of the things that I said. And I was wondering if anybody here had issues with that. No. Awesome. I have, I have issues with the um you know staggered formation or elf elf kind of uh, mindset. I I totally agree with what you um you know, so uh yeah, yeah, on the on 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 a single lane road, you know, you want to be single. You want to have the whole road. Potholes, not 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 just not just your turn, but potholes, blind blind hills, all those kinds of things. Have you switching lanes? You know, switching from position one, two, and three from the far left to the far right of the lane. So yeah. Excellent points. You're right. You're especially right about the potholes and the road hazards. Yep, that's true. You know what's that's funny? What... I just now realized that my headset was not was not hooked up. Here I am wearing it all this time. Okay. You've got good sound. Yeah, I, I do have good sound. Uh, anyway. Okay. All right. Okay, so now continuation of rider's responsibility. This is the continuation of the stuff that you're going to mention in the rider's brief. Um, ride within your skill set or ride your own ride. Um, if the rider in front of you pulls too far ahead, rest assured he will wait for you at the next turn. Just continue riding on the road. Um, all riders are a ride leader to the rider immediately behind them. Okay. So what that means is like everybody, before they make a turn, they should glance to make sure the rider behind them can see them. And if the if there is no rider behind them, don't make the turn and hit the gas. Make the turn or pause there at the intersection. Remain visible until the rider behind you appears so that he sees where to turn and he doesn't get lost. Um, this is something that everybody should know that they have to do. Um as Gene mentioned, we want every rider to see, signal road hazards to the riders behind them. Uh, you can use your hand, you can use your foot to point out like loose gravel, potholes, dead skunks, things like that. Um, do not assume that was safe. That what was safe for the rider ahead of you is safe for you. Okay. For example, um, maybe the group has to pass a truck. Okay, the guy in front of you, he had room to pass. But you got to evaluate if you have enough time and space to pass. All right. He had enough space, say, to pull out into the roadway to merge. Do you? You have to make that decision for yourself. Okay. Um, hey, maybe the light turn. The guy ahead of you, yeah, he should go through the yellow light. But by the time you get to the intersection, it's going to be red. Okay. Everybody has to ride their own ride, make a decision, and not simply do what the rider in front of them does. Um, the last bullet point here, uh, our club stops at all controlled intersections. A lot of clubs don't bother with that. You know, if, if the ride captain is through the intersection and it turns yellow, everybody just bunches up and they all go through the intersection thinking that as long as we're one big group, the cars will have to wait for us. Um, okay, that's illegal and people can get a bunch of tickets and it's also dangerous i think other people disagree but i say it's too dangerous but <clears throat> the last thing i want is to be leading a ride and everybody gets a ticket okay um so yeah we stop at red lights we stop at stop signs you know and um that last point also about everybody stopping at the stop sign let's talk about how that leads into some of the ride captain's responsibilities. Now, you don't have to put this through in the rider's brief. This is for you guys to know, okay? Um, you got to get the riders to their destination safely. Try not to make any wrong turns. People hate U-turns, and I know they told me. Uh, uh, don't create 
an insurmountable gap after you pull away from a stop sign or pull away from an intersection or after you pass somebody, the last rider has to wait for every rider to pause at the stop sign before he has to pause at it. All right. So you're the right captain. You come up, you pause, you go. And then you have six or eight people behind you who have to do a pause. And that last guy comes up. He's had all those pauses that he's had to wait before he gets his turn. So if you just go, you're like a mile down the road before that guy can pull out from the stop sign. So when you come to a stop sign and you're, I like to just wait till everybody is almost stopped behind me. When the last guy is slowing and almost at a stop, then I pull out and go slow. And this generally helps people get all out sort of as a group and everybody stay together. So I, when you, when you pull out, you want to pull out and build speed gradually. Um, and people who ride with me know that I, I don't like doing that, but when I'm a ride captain, I got to, otherwise that last guy, I'm going to lose the group, you know? Um, I mentioned the thing about uh, regrouping at every turn or controlled intersections. If you go through a light and a yellow splits the group up, find a place to pull over. Maybe it's a wide shoulder. Maybe it's a parking lot. Um, but it's best just to pull over and wait until the light turns green for the others, and then you can pull out and they'll be right behind. Um, don't lead your trailing riders into danger by passing on a double ye yellow or going fast when there are poor sight lines ahead. Uh, sight lines is, is also something. Um, I, I like good sight lines. I don't like going fast if I don't have good sight lines. Um, so, you know, I, and I think most people are probably like that. However, I've ridden with people who they don't care if there's a sight line at all. They're, they'll just want to drag a knee going around a, a, a blind, blind mountain corner. Don't be that guy. Okay, so I've lectured long enough, but let's talk about some best practices, okay? Conduct a root recon or rehearsal of time allows. The reason my rides are not as well organized or run as smoothly as Jose's rides is because Jose reconnais does reconnaissance and Jose does rehearsals. And I hardly ever have time to do that. Um, and it's just like looking at his rides versus my rides shows the importance of the first bullet point here, okay? Um, now, if you can't do that, um, you Google Street View is a great tool to preview key intersections. So like if the route goes through this little town and you're not sure how congested it is, or the, the intersection looks funny on a map because four roads seem to come together in one place. Google Street View, then you can look at it before you even leave the leave the, walk out the door. Okay. Um, a root cue sheet is a great idea as a backup to GPS. We've all seen the ones that Jose uh, prints up and then emails to people before a ride. Great idea because um, this might not have happened to you, but it's happened to most of us. The GPS goes wonky. Um, and uh, the cue sheet is definitely a good backup. Paper generally does not malfunction. Um, but uh, having a backup GPS is actually kind of easy, okay? Um, like I use, I use a Garmin right now, but... I, I have the uh, the BMW TFT and the connected app. So yeah, I, I put the uh, the root in both. And then if my Garmin, you know, fries, um, like it did a month after I got it, you know, I can switch over to the TFT display and mount the phone on the handlebar and I, and I got my map and my, and my instructions and all that. Um, or Google Maps on your phone is also really good. Um, find what works for you. And a backup GPS, if you can have it, is a great idea. And it might be as simple as having a back. If you use your phone for navigation, remember, you can put like two GPS apps on the phone. So one decides that your license is expired, you can switch to the other. Um, 
Okay, so now we mentioned rider value introductions are key for networking and social interaction. And I wanna stress again, use them to gauge a rider's experience and if you think they're going to be safe. I mean, if during the ride brief, the guy talks about scraping knees or the how he's so happy to be back on the road because uh, um, his, his suspended license was just reinstated, uh, we might have an issue with the guy. Or he might be a great guy. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. um, and definitely remember, if you have larger groups, uh, six to 10 riders, whatever your comfort level is, assign the small group leads for the improved ride management's control and safety. Um, okay, and that basically is the, as, uh, oh, I've got the lessons learned. I skipped a slide here. Good grief. Some lessons that we've learned in the past. It's not enough just to have like a navigation tool. Um, you want to know, you want to be familiar with using it before you need it. Um, when I got my Garmin, I used it to go back and forth to work. I know how to get to work, but this was giving me things like um, it, it, it's it was different from the TomTom. -tom. Like the TomTom -tom would say, you know, turn right in 100 yards. Well, the, the Garmin was like uh, turn right in 50 yards. So it's like, oh, well, that's not what I'm used to. So get familiar with navigation tools so that you don't really have to wonder how, how to use it while you're leading the ride. Um, Paper maps are great, you know, if, especially like during the riders briefing or at rest stops, somebody's going to say, where are we? You know, um, a paper map is a great way to, to illustrate the where are we? Because um, you can see big thing, not just some little phone. Um, there will be no shows. Everybody gets ghosted. Um, I don't think it's a good idea to wait for late RSVPs unless you have a phone call saying, hey, this thing happened. Can you rate for the three of us? You think something like that. Then you can ask the group, can we wait another 10 minutes or something like that? But uh, but if you don't hear from them, just assume they're ghosting you. Um, try to get the phone numbers of small group leads. Maybe give your phone number out during the writer's brief. Um, and uh, the, the other group leads, put it in your phone before kick stands up because um, you don't want to, you want to have it and not need it instead of needing it and not have it. Um, did you know that old guys have certain frequent and urgent needs? Yeah, <laughs> especially after their morning coffee. Um, definitely you got to plan for public toilet stops or half the group will leave the, the ride the first time they come to Wawa. Um so that's just, I mean, I've been guilty of this. So that's why I put it in. I've been guilty of this. Uh, so yeah, definitely. Um, and finally, a few tools can make a flat tire a delay instead of a call for a tow truck. So, you know, a few tools are great to have, you know, even if you don't know how to use them, somebody else might. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, that's the we whole presentation, guys. So we missed a great opportunity for a photo on um, last weekend's ride, and and it just somebody like maybe even me should have pulled out his phone, which was right in the tank bag, and taken the picture of one of our members standing with their back to the street across the gravel lot, and clearly in in the position, and was right next to a sign that said no dumping. Huh? And that was <laughs> <laughs> And that, that that should have been a picture. I, I I'm kicking myself for not getting that picture. Uh, That's funny. So you oh, know, Bruce. one thing I noticed on last weekend um, is that uh, it's really nice to keep the small group apart. Our small group got connected to another small group for a while, and then you've got a whole lot more people. And you know, there cars can be two kinds of problems. One kind is they get aggressive to try to get in front of you, or two, they decide to be too friendly, and you find yourself, you know, slowing down to stop at the stoplight, and here's this truck that's waiting, you know, 50 feet from the intersection, waving you on, you know, so uh, both <laughs> of those, and, and all those get compounded, and both of those things kind of happen, um, get compounded when the groups get bigger. 
and you know our small group got you know such that you know the I, I think that there was a time when because we had two small groups that kind of had gotten glued together that bars assumed we were all you know so uh, yeah you know so bruce i've got a, i've got a few things if i can uh just just take the uh uh share them with you so um uh on the meetup um uh because uh there were a lot of uh new people that I that I had noticed that had signed up, you know, I, I put a note or a comment in there that if uh, since many of you are are first time writers or I'm unfamiliar, I'm unfamiliar with your writing abilities, and I asked them to at least uh, give me the number of years writing and if they were familiar with um, off road gravel roads writing and all. So a lot of a lot of those people did come back and say, yeah, I've got 15 years experience. I've been riding dirt bikes since I was six years old. So that ameliorated a lot of worry on my part as far as the, the capability. And then also um, there was uh, one gentleman at last last weekend's ride that came up to me. He was on a uh, Harley trike and he says, uh, this is my first group ride. So, you know, I'm not sure how, how I'm going to do. So, uh, you know, I was good of him to come up, you know, come up and identify himself. So I talked That's to good. him. You know, I emphasize ride your own ride. You know, you need you know stay behind me, and then I'll you know try to try to keep up, but you know be comfortable in the space and distance, and I'll 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 gauge my speed based on you know your capability to uh, to follow and all that. Um, you had that comment about don't hit the rider in front of you. One of the one of the first rides that I led while I was still uh, uh, working uh, you know, as a corporate uh, consultant, you know with with the, it was before my BMW days. Um, we were up in the, in Gettysburg and we're at a stoplight and we all, we got, we all got bunched up and somebody hit the person in front of them at the stoplight, you know, bent a fender and all that. So it's not only on the road, but especially at stoplights, you got to make sure, you know, you give yourself plenty of stopping distance. And then last thing about the small groups, you know, it's been really, uh, great that you know we've we've adhered to the uh small group uh uh mantra because you know last week we had four groups of four people and that was probably the optimum because you could easily you know keep track of uh four people especially if uh, oh, yeah. the last guy in your small group has the brightest brightest headlights you can always <laughs> see you know see that he's following behind you um i've been i've been on some rides where you know we didn't have as many small group leads and we've had to have maybe seven people. That's probably about the max because, you know, if you can keep track of the third or fourth person behind you and then they're that third or fourth person is keeping track of the, the last people, then, you know, you're able to manage the group a little bit, but it's, it, yeah. it gets through I see with more than six people. I would say that the, uh, the optimum size of the group is not a fixed number. I mean, if we get um, people on, if I, if I get 10 people that I am familiar with and I know they're all about the same lit skill level, no problem, okay? But if I get five people, one of them's a beginner who's very nervous and slow and two of them want to go super fast, I got a huge problem. The ride cabinet has a huge problem in that case then because then you got the, the guys who want to go fast they're not going to want to be behind the slow person. They're going to want to race ahead. Um, so the size of the group really depends on the group, I think. And how are you going to find that out? It's kind of a a, a, a dice throw. Because yeah, so one, one, yeah. one thing that Henry does on a, a couple of his rides, especially if he wants to do a, a spirited ride, is he'll, he'll specifically state in the uh, ride description, this will be a very spirited ride. If you are not comfortable riding, you know, spirited, you know, please do not sign up. And so he's been able to do these rides and there's maybe four or five people, you know, that sign up. So he's, I, he's I've he's, been on a couple of those rides. They are <laughs> lots of fun. Oh yeah. Um, but I've also had people come up to me after rides says, uh, thank you for going slow. Cause I'm a new rider and, and this is boosting my confidence. Um, so it's just one of those things that somebody, uh, it might've been you, Jose, about a year ago suggested that we have a ride on there, just an easy going, 
ride that would be really helpful for beginners and people who are who had a brand new bike and haven't figured it out yet type of thing. Yeah, I, I, um, I can't remember which one that was. Yeah, but uh, I thought that was a great idea, and I I don't I didn't go on it, so I, I don't remember uh, if it, uh, what the reaction was. Okay, so uh, thank you, Bruce. That was uh, great information. Thank you for uh, presenting. Um, let's open it up to the rest of the people here on the uh, the, the meeting and uh, sure. see if you have any questions or things yeah. you'd like to share with uh, with the group. Yeah, well, I'll just say one last thing though. Uh, thank you because you drove this project. You basically wrote the slides. I just made them pretty, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then talked my head off. Uh, yeah. But no, this is this is not Bruce's. This is Jose's first with some help from Bruce. So. Oh, well, and thank you and that. Henry, Henry Friedman Henry. had had some right. input for that too. So I want to, you know, give him some props for uh, some input. All right. Anybody uh, comments, questions? Okay. Well. I had a fun story um, from a GS ride that combines his point, Bruce's point about some will want to go fast and some will want to go slow. Plus, some people have different bladder needs. I was on the gentle GS ride with the Squirrel Valley. We had about 10 riders in the whole ride. And, you know, we're going through, you know, around Catoctin State Park. You do, you know, five miles of gravel, then a little bit of road, and then five more miles of gravel. And there's this one guy who really wanted to go like 50 miles an hour down the, you know, the back gravel roads. And he kind of started in the beginning of the group and he passes everybody else up. And then we come along and he's got to stop at a gas station to relieve his bladder. So we're twiddling our thumbs waiting for him. Then we start off again and he's like, you're missing everybody. And then stopping at the next gas station. <laughs> so he had both. He was a super. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's good. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. It's like we we don't know everybody's situations. That uh, maybe there's like a discreet way to ask people's uh, motorcycle range and your personal range during the rider's brief. I don't know, but uh, yeah, well, you could ask personal range. I I don't think in this particular case, which um, I started off annoyed and then settled on amused, um, which I think is probably the way to do it. <laughs> don't get annoyed, just get amused. Um, I don't think this particular individual, just by his behavior, would have probably um, thought of himself as any any kind of a problem to accommodate. It's just like, you know, I gotta go, I gotta go. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Kermit, welcome. Sorry you're you're late. Um, what, we're, we're done with the training, and uh, what we're doing is uh, sharing any uh, lessons learned, war stories about, uh, you know, group, group writing and all that. So you got any thoughts to, you want to, you want to share with us? No, I'm sorry. I, you know, I read your emails eight o'clock, not seven. So I'm, it was eight, eight. No. <laughs> That's I'm okay. Dumbass. So we record, we recorded it. Uh, we're going to post, repost it and invite people to go, uh, re, uh, listen to it and all that. And uh, hopefully right. we'll, we'll, we'll get more people. I don't have any horror stories other than just to kind of to impress upon people, no matter what's going on, you always ride your ride where you're comfortable. You know, that's, that's a good rule, you know? So uh, uh, Kermit, if you can, if you can either stay on or I'll give you a call. Um, I'd like to talk to you about Friday, Saturday, because uh, there's sort of some good news other than, and, and uh, not, not my uh, broken motorcycle. Okay. Yeah. I can stay on as long as you want to. No problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to go Saturday. Okay. Um, I've got a question. Uh, some people have these, you know, Bluetooth things in their helmets. And, you know, I always hear the ads going, oh, yeah, connect with up to 18 people. And um, yeah. I, I wonder if that's just all bullshit or if those things actually work. They're not bullshit, but I have a car now. Uh, uh, Jose has got a Senna. Those two companies don't like each other. <laughs> so, uh, um, and and the thing is, I know that they can. They got some that will communicate with the others, 
but that's only the latest version and I'm not going to buy another one because I just bought this one like two years ago. So yeah, it, it seems to work better in one-to-one. Now, if everybody owned the same brand and like the same model or just one model off, it would be perfect. But I think in practice, the most I've ever been able to, to get going was the ride captain talking to the, uh, the tail gunner. Uh, in a way, that's all you need. True. You know, um, but yeah, that, does it take a lot of time to push all these buttons and listen to all these tones and all that? Or yeah, it does okay. for me. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've tried to sync up with somebody who didn't have my exact one, and and five minutes later we give up. Yeah, having the same brand really helps. But there, yeah, we were able to sync up different brands when uh, we went on the uh, Fontana getaway. We had eight people. And I think the majority of the people had were able to link up with the comms. And it was really good because on a lot of the twisties that we were on, uh, the people up front were able to, you know, uh, not only signal physically, but they, they were able to communicate, hey, you know, big rock up ahead or pothole coming up, you know. And so that really helped them because we were going at a pretty spirited pace, you know, through uh, throughout the route. So if if you can sync up comms, it's it's great, but it's you know as Bruce said, it's difficult if you especially if you have different brands and all that. Okay. Uh, a kind the longer of a your trip and the more you travel together, the more likely that's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. It's it's hard with uh, you know new people to the group. Yeah. Uh, if you have if, uh, because you haven't uh, you know ridden with them before and you're you're you, you don't know what the uh, you know. Their, tip, their communication systems are like. So if you've got a close-knit group like we had for the Fontana Fontana uh, ride, you know, it, it was really easy, so. Yeah. And another possible complication, I know Woody had this issue in France, was uh, he, he hooked the helmet Bluetooth to the GPS, and that worked great. Or he hooked the uh, intercom to his riding partner, and that worked great. But if you try to hook them together, it would cut one off. Hmm. So, and it's, it wasn't supposed to do that, but he couldn't get it uh, worked out, unfortunately. So it, it can, be, if, if you are dependent upon your headset for your GPS instructions, you might not want to use it as an intercom with somebody else. Um, it's, it just is what it is, but I don't know. Yeah. Hey, how about everybody in the club just buy what I bought? What did you buy? I bought a Cardo, uh, Pack Talk Bold, which I think is two versions old now, because they come mm -hmm. out with one every year. It seems like. Yeah, I've got a a Cardo in my off road helmet, and I've got a Cena in my on road helmet. Double the frustration. Yeah, yeah, I'll never be able to connect with anybody ever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, All right. the, the, the else? Is, go ahead. No, I was just uh, checking to see if anybody else had uh, something to share, lesson learned, or uh, best practice or horror yeah. story. I would like to share a little bit, Exo, if that's okay. Go ahead. Go on. Uh, well, first of all, uh, Jose and Bruce, thank you for an excellent presentation. Really, really appreciate all the uh, TLC that went into this. I uh, personally, uh, coming from a television broadcast background, I really would like to emphasize and maybe have you guys come up with a step where uh, you definitely set up the comms. Because when we do caravans on the road with the film production, it's like a must. It's an absolute must have. Uh, and in some cases with some production companies, you get in trouble if you don't have your walkie talkie up and running because inevitably something shows up. So I, I would like to emphasize the, uh, the importance for comms as many as possible for logistics and for safety. That that would be my vote, my suggestion. Uh, I mean, Exo, you know you know how it is when everybody's in the same frequency and in the battlefield. It's just a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Okay, yeah, that's a good, good point. point. Yeah, Jim um, Jim Carlisle showed me a way with a Cardo unit that I might be able to integrate one of those Motorola 
family camping type radios. Yeah. And integrate FRS. that into the Cardo. Yeah, that that's the right name. Yeah, yeah integrate F that into the Cardo. And then, you know, the Cardo can talk to the GPS, which can talk to other GPSs or, you know, blah, blah, blah. Believe it, or, believe it or not, I've actually heard of groups. They they get a Discord server, which is a, a for gamers to talk trash with each other. They'll set up a Discord server and then tell everybody, get out your phone, log in, and they use that for the group intercom. Now, yes. it offers the advantage of it's going to work with any headset. Um, and the other advantage is, of course, as well, it's well um, supported. But um, you get into the hills and you get out of internet range, it just suddenly cuts off. Uh, it's an interesting idea. But uh, I think we travel in places, enough places with poor cell coverage, or maybe it's just that I have T Mobile. Um, that might not, that wouldn't work for us. But no, it's, I, 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 Let's try that. Let's let's give that a try for some of our shorter rides to see if we can't figure yeah. it out. You know, hey Bruce, it here, here's, Bruce, here's well, an idea for uh, this um, Sunday's breakfast at Clifton. You know, let let's carve out probably either maybe at the beginning or maybe at the tail end of breakfast. Everybody get their helmets on and <clears> everybody that that's got comms. Let's do a practice. You know, sure. sink sink. Yes, I, sure. I I will second that. The, here's the bottom line. It's going to add value to the experience, guys, because then you can start saying, oh, look at this uh, site, look at this over there and all that. But the bottom line is uh, safety and logistics. Uh, hey, something yeah. happened, all this. But if all is going well uh, and things are normal, then you can start goofing around and, hey, sure, how's the sure. family and all that stuff. It, and that adds to the value. But I really would covet that we uh, we instill uh, comms discipline to our rides, and I would I would urge you guys to figure that out. That'd be a, my request. Cool. Uh, another thing that I actually we didn't mention in this, and I'm surprised nobody picked up on it. Um, we did not lay out any hand signals. Um, that's sort of another discussion during the work. We should have a few hand signals that we tell people about during the riders' brief. Um, basic ones, like I got to pee, I need gas, you know, um, it could be helpful for the new riders. Well, we can do, Hey Bruce, what we can do is we can find that little picture chart that shows the, all the hand signals and then make it, make it a practice of posting that as mm -hmm. a picture on the, uh, the meetup site so that, you know, everybody at least is aware that, Hey, sure. you know, here, here are the, here are the basic signals you guys need to know. For the ride, you know, like you know, gas, you know, left, right, got to pee, you know, road hazard up ahead, or yeah. you know. I'll I'll second that, guys. We got to have our our set of uh, nonverbal communication for on the road and stuff. Sorry, I got the metro going in the background, but yes, please. Uh, let's develop something on hand signals. Yes, good. Yeah, well, I, uh, all right. I'm I'm using something called Anki. It it's a program. It's A N K I, and it you can get it for your phone, and you can load a deck of hand signals in it, and it's like flashcards. And I'm using cool. that to try to learn the hand signals. Cool. On K. Yeah. Huh? yeah, it's um. There it is in the chat. Okay. Anybody? Anything else? Um, when everybody else drops off, Herb, if you're you're still on, I'd like you and uh, Kermit to stay on because I'd like to discuss uh, Saturday's ride. I'm good. Awesome. Exo and uh, Bruce, thank yep. you so much for an excellent presentation. Thank you. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Fantastic. <laughs>